Hi everybody, okay, welcome back. We're looking today at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek, and we are looking today at the beginning of chapter 6, a whole new chapter entitled The Tenses. In this chapter, we're introducing three new tenses to the verb system that you've been learning. You have learned so far the present tense. Today, we're going to introduce the future, the imperfect, and the aorist tenses. Let me give you a quick heads up what we're going to do in this video, and then we'll get straight on with it. First, I'm going to explain in the simplest possible terms the meaning of verbs in the four different tenses. That's the first thing. Second thing, we're going to look at how to recognise them, and that'll take us to this column here. And that's really very easy, and especially when you start to see it in practice, which is the third thing, and that is from uh, the exercise practice 6.2. So I'm going to work through the whole of practice 6.2 with you in order to show you how to recognise the tenses. So first up, let's think about the meaning of these different tenses. Now at this point, I want to just make a brief comment about the sections in Jeremy Duff's book that we're going to be covering. We're actually going to cover sex, section 6.1, 6.2, and all the way through section 6.3, just in this video. The reason is because these four pages in the book, I think, are quite complicated, and arguably unnecessarily complicated for what we need to know at this stage. Especially if you're using these videos, I'm going to be able to guide you through and introduce the complexity and the subtlety as we go. What Jeremy Duff has tried to do, understandably, and I think he's done it quite well, is to get more of the complexity and nuance in up front. Now here's the problem with that. It turns out that even what Jeremy Duff has given you here is very much scratching the surface of the tip of the iceberg, to mix my metaphors. And indeed, if you go not very deeply into the meaning of different Greek tenses, especially the aorist tense, you find that its meaning is actually debated. And there are whole books written on the meaning of the aorist and PhD theses and battles at conferences over what the Greek aorist means, and indeed some of the other tenses as well. So what it helps to do, really, is to start from the very, very simplest, simpler than what you've got here, in terms of understanding the meaning of the tenses, and then to build up the complexity and the nuance, and you'll start to see it as you keep working through Greek, and, and you'll uh, start to appreciate what some of the subtleties are. That, that, therefore, means there's a caveat and a warning here. What I'm about to give you is not something for you to start thinking, yeah, I got what the Greek tenses mean. No, you haven't. What you've got is the simplest summary, which will pave the way for a developing and growing appreciation of the subtleties of the Greek tenses as the months and the years go past. This is not easy to summarise and to understand, so we have to make very broad generalisations. But with that in mind, if we can just make a very broad generalisation about the meaning of the four tenses, now here's how we do it. Present tense denotes something that's happening at the present time. Either I stand, like that's what I'm doing now, or I am standing. So that gives a sense of an ongoing action. But if it's happening right now, it's the present tense. In the future, very simple. It's an action that hasn't happened yet, but it's going to ha happen. I will finish this video eventually. I will finish. So in English, we add the word will. In Greek, you don't do that. You just use a different tense, the future tense. The imperfect tense and the aorist tense both generally concern actions that happened in the past. The difference between them is that the imperfect tense denotes an action which is some way extended in time, whereas the aorist denotes an action where you don't want to say that it was extended in time, you simply want to say that the action happened. Now let me say that again because it's so important. The imperfect denotes a past action that's somehow extended in time, whereas the aorist tense denotes an action that happened in the past where you don't want to say it, it uh, is extended in time in some way. So let me give you some examples. The aorist, uh, Steve went shopping. Steve went. Uh, I walked to the shops. Steve recorded the video. All I want to say is that it happened in the past. That's all. The imperfect I might say, Steve was recording a video. Or Steve 
used to record videos every morning. Or uh, every day Steve recorded videos. And see so what I'm doing there is I'm giving a sense uh, in different subtle ways in English that uh, these actions are extended in time somehow and therefore the imperfect tense will be used. Now, what that actually means is that the default past tense is not the imperfect but the aorist. The one that the word you've probably never heard before is you should think of as the usual one, the normal one. The imperfect one you'd probably use uh, in circumstances where you do want to say something extra about the action, namely that it's extended through time. Now just one brief note about that. The difference between an action where you just say uh, it happened and an action where you want to say it's extended through time or it's repeated or it's habitual is a difference in aspect. A difference in aspect. So we talk about the aspect of uh, a verb or the aspect of an action uh, being, well as Duff puts it here, it's the nature of the action uh, in relation to its happening through time. Was it a process? Is it completed? That kind of thing. Right. So just pause there. Let's go back. Super simple. Present, it's happening now. I stand. I am standing. Future, I will stand. Imperfect, a past action that's extended in time in some way. Aorist, a past action where I don't want to say it's extended in time. So aorist is then the unmarked tense. All I want to do is to say that it's happened and I don't want to say anything else. That's the meaning of these verbs. Right, now let's just pause there. Get your breath back. How are you going to tell the difference between them? Well, it's not as difficult as you might think. Here's what I'm going to do. This video has already been going on too long. I'm going to stop this one now. In the next video, I'm going to come back and I'll give you the uh, meaning of the... Uh, uh, how to recognise the tenses, then we'll go on and look at the third column. But we'll pause for now, you can get your breath back and wait for the next video to come up, and then we'll continue. God bless. Bye for now.